Welcome back everyone. Today on the electronics bench, I'm going to be soldering up connections for a five volt wall transformer and power switch. <laughs> The first thing that I need to confirm is that this is the right transformer and this is a five volt two amp. And then I'm gonna look at what the polarity is on the actual plug itself, which is this little diagram. So this shows that the outer part of the plug is negative and then the inner portion is the positive. So once I figured out the actual power plug, I can look now at the power jack itself and figure out where I need to connect my positive and negative. So I start to really just kind of eyeball it. It looks like this is connecting to the positive. And then I need to sort of figure out if this is the positive, what are these other things? Now, a little bit of research and some probing, um, not alien probing, but probing. This is the negative. Um, this is a terminal that's used to detect if a plug is inserted. I don't use that. It's not really something that you're ever going to really use in common um, applications, but um, that is what it's for. Now I'm going to just strip all of my wire again. Silicone insulated is my friend and favorite uh, wire to be using. PVC coated wire, it melts the insulation creeps back a little bit, exposing more wire as you're soldering. Um, it burns, all sorts of gross things happen. So I really do continue to prefer silicone wire. With a little bit of poster tack holding the socket or jack in place, I'm gonna pre-tin all of the connections, all two of them. And if you find that you're not um, getting a good adhesion, a little bit of scuffing with a scotch bright or uh, scouring pad, or a little bit of rosin flux will help the solder stick. Once I've pre-tinned the wires, I'll go back in and just do a little quick touch and get those all soldered and connected. And it goes very, very quickly. Pre-tinning or pre-soldering really speeds all of this up. I am using color-coded wire to denote red for the positive and black for the ground. Um, you'll see when I wire the switch, since the switch is really interrupting the positive, I'm using red on both connections. And this just helps me understand what goes to what. Switching on over to the switch, no real play on words intended there. I am going to pre-tin. Now the switch is really interrupting the flow on the positive. So in this case, I'm using both red wires just to help again, when I start to bring all of these components together, help me visually understand what's going on. You wanna hold everything in place just a little bit for that solder to cool, it cools very quickly and sets up very nicely. You can see pre-tinning really helps with the speed at which the solder really flows and just getting a good connection. Now, once I've done all of that, I cut small pieces of heat shrink. I really, really try to heat shrink um, and insulate everything, all of my connections to avoid any opportunity for shorting. Shorts are bad, uh, jorts are bad, shorts are bad, um, but you don't want connections when you don't want them. That's how fires start. So a little bit of heat shrink and a heat gun and everything is nice and tidy. So once I have these groovy things, depending on my application, there are a bunch of ways I can use these. In this case, this particular circuit board that I've built has an on and off switch built in. So I can just use the power jack wire that directly into the board and plug everything in and we're good to go. Now this particular board also has the ability to have an external switch wired into it. So there's a little jumper right here that I can remove that jumper, connect the external switch, and then have that work as 
an external sort of extended switch away from the circuit board. So that's a nice little feature and it allows me to use both the power jack and then an external switch that I can wire to a more remote location. So this is an application where each component is used individually. Now, if I don't have a nifty circuit board with one of these external switch ports, jacks, screw terminals, the more traditional way to wire these things together would be to take them, and if this is my power and my power jack, I would wire up or connect the ground to the ground of the thing that I'm powering. I would connect one of the positives from the switch into the positive from the jack, and then that positive would go to the positive of the thing that I'm powering. And this is really just a more traditional setup for a switch to the power plug. And there you go. Not exactly super exciting stuff, but some basic connections. If you found this helpful, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel and we will see you back really soon. Yeah.